In this video, a huge announcement from Intel that they're pairing with Stability AI to create a new supercomputer. And also we learn of the new generative AI features inside of Photoshop and also inside of Critter. And uh, finally, we take a look at some audio that you can do with artificial intelligence. Now, before we jump into that, quick reminder that I have got some courses on Udemy, which you might want to sign up for. Uh, Learn Generative AI with SDXL and Comfy UI, and also the advanced version of that. But we've also added now a new uh, course, which is the Generative AI Mastery with Comfy UI, SDXL, and Stable Diffusion. I'll have links to those in the description. So the Intel Innovation, uh, event yesterday, Intel came up with a huge announcement that they were going to use the Intel Gaudi um, accelerators with Stability AI to create a new supercomputer. This is going to be based on many, many Xeon CPUs, which Intel uses in its data centers. And they're also going to use 4000 Intel Gaudi 2 accelerators. Now, these are accelerators that are used for machine learning. And Intel claims that they're going, that they're one of the best um, uh, computing devices for machine learning, sometimes even beating the industry leader, yeah, NVIDIA. Now, the new supercomputer is significant for a number of reasons. Number one, Intel says it's going to be the largest supercomputer in Europe, the largest AI supercomputer in Europe. It'll be one of the top 15 in the world. And it is being made by Intel and it's not being made by NVIDIA. So that is a huge coup for Intel. And they've actually said that Stability AI is one of their anchor customers in this field. Now the Intel Xeon CPUs are processors used in Intel's data center computers. But what about the Intel uh, Gaudi 2? You might not have heard of that. Now Intel say that Gaudi 2 is purpose built for deep learning acceleration. And they say it's fundamentally more efficient. There's a comparison here with some of NVIDIA's top machines. And you can see the Gaudi 2 performing uh, at the best in several of these benchmarks. Now, this fact sheet, sheet is coming from Intel. It's first party data. So uh, it will be useful to see some independent testing and how the, uh, how the hardware performs in relation to that. But it is something of a win that Intel have now got Stability AI as one of their main customers. Now, whilst on stage, the CEO of Intel, Pat Gelsinger, also spoke of what he called the AI PC. This is some new jargon coming from Intel. And they're saying that the AI PC, as they call it, is going to fundamentally transform the PC experience. Uh, Pat Gelsinger was actually comparing the uh, evolution of this device to the evolution of Wi-Fi, which he helped to create whilst he was at Intel. And they've also said that the launch date for these new uh, AI PCs is going to be December the 14th. They also changed the naming scheme. They're going to call things a completely different set of names now. They're talking about the Intel Core Ultra. This is all very confusing. And even the CEO on stage was a little bit confused about what was happening with the naming. The journey begins with our upcoming new Intel Core Ultra processor launch, formerly Meteor Lake. I'll probably goof it up one or twice in the keynote yet, you know, but now it's the Intel Core Ultra. And this really is part of Intel's attempt to bring the age of AI onto personal devices so that ordinary individuals can start using these AI PCs to do inferencing without needing to rely on cloud data centers. However, they did demonstrate on stage a couple of applications using their hardware. One was GIMP, which uh, was used to create an image using stable diffusion, everything open source there. And they also demonstrated Audacity, which is a pretty decent open source music on or an audio editor they used a piece of software known known as refusion to create music inside of audacity using ai 
Now, if you're wondering what Refusion is, I was as well, and I actually looked it up and we'll be demonstrating some of the features in Refusion. It's a very interesting uh, way of using Stable Diffusion to create audio. We'll take a look at that later on. But first of all, let's move into Photoshop. And Photoshop now has been updated so that we can do, uh, we can do artificial intelligence using the standard version of Photoshop and not just the beta version. And we can see it in action here. This is what I've been working with. We can see here, <laughs> let's take a look at the original image, shall we? That's the original image. This was done inside of Stable uh, Diffusion. And we managed to create some of these designs inside of Photoshop. Now Photoshop just wants you to type in some words, make a selection, and then, and the selection I made, you can see it there. That's one of the images that it created. Just a beautiful face. Just remove the existing face and replace it with a beautiful face. This one seems okay. I mean, it's not that, uh, I, I probably wouldn't use this one, but it does seem okay. There are, I think, a total of about nine or 10 images that I, I worked with. And uh, out of that, I got a couple, including this one, which seem to be more or less okay, but most of them um, not really of the quality that I would want to use. Some of them definitely not of the quality I would want to use. But this is Photoshop and this is now available inside of Photoshop along with a whole slew of new AI powered features inside of Adobe Creative Cloud. I think they're now starting to update for the 2024 installments. Now, all in all, I think the editing is pretty good in terms of how it blends the new images in. But the new images my, I didn't feel that most of them were worth any anything. I think most of them are the kind of things that I would not want to use. Um, I think we came closest with this one, fairly photorealistic, but we have got this feature now inside of Critter and it looks amazing. So we'll take a look at that. Now I have got a, com I have got a, a comparison between Photoshop and Stable Diffusion. Uh, I'll have a link to that if you want to take a look at that. Uh, I, I wasn't that impressed with Photoshop initially and it's still not really my uh, first go-to for uh, this type of generative fill. One software that might well compete favorably with Photoshop is Krita AI uh, or Krita AI Diffusion, which uses stable diffusion inside of Krita to create, um, you can create images like this. You can see the same kind of setup as in Photoshop. Try to keep it fairly standard, fairly similar. The original photo, let's see if we can bring that up. There we are. And then we created a number of different alternatives, which we can take a look at here. And I felt that Krita AI did a much better job than Photoshop. It created images that were um, here, for instance, that was in keeping with the original style. Again, this one here and this one. It's a fairly large part of the image to try to restore. It's a central part of the image to try to, 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 to do your in-painting on. And whereas Photoshop just created things that were unusable most of the time inside of Krita, it was genuinely really surprisingly good. Now, most of the time you'll probably want to be replacing something in the background or a minor detail. And this is going to be extremely good for that kind of, uh, for that kind of work. I would say that it did take a little bit longer than Photoshop. Uh, but Photoshop takes things into the cloud and then brings them back onto your PC, um, which uses their cloud technology. But I don't think it's as powerful as what we're getting here with Stable Diffusion. Uh, I would say this is probably my preferred option for generative fill or generative AI inside of this kind of editing software. In one of my previous videos, I did mention working with GIMP to try to see if I could get that to work with Intel's hardware. Wasn't able to get it to work, but that's something to try again in future. So let's take a look at Refusion, which is Rift Plus Diffusion. This was actually created by some developers who were working with Stable Diffusion. And they said, look, if we create a waveform or a spectrogram, uh, which is a representation of music, using Stable Diffusion, we could actually turn that into music. And that's what they worked on doing. So you can create music using word prompts. And it actually produces some interesting sounds. Uh, and we'll play a couple of those maybe. And you can hear those in the background. But Stability AI also announced Stable Audio, which is their own version for generative AI to create music and sound effects. This one is surprisingly sophisticated. I did try it out and the results were, <laughs> 
they were kind of okay. A dreamy melody with soothing bass and calming drums in the style of 1980s hip hop. Alien soundscape with dreamy melody. And then eight seconds of a heartwarming love song in the style of, I was gonna put in the King of Pop, then I realized it could be Michael Jackson, that could be, that could be Elvis Presley. So I put in Michael Jackson and it didn't sound anything at all like Michael Jackson. Let's try this one. But it sounded okay, so I gave that one a thumbs up. The software can actually handle some really big, big prompts. And you can go up to one, one minute and 35. And what's amazing about this one, Ambient House New Age Meditation Advertisement 808 Drum Machine, 808 Kick, Claps, Shaker, Synthesizer, Synth Bass, Soaring, Lead, Lead, Heavy, Heavily Reverbed, Modern, Sleek, Beautiful, Inspiring, Futuristic. It actually kind of evolves over time, so it changes in the way that a song would. So you can get a sense of the progression there. And I found this pretty impressive. Um, I think this is one you might want to try out. So I'll have a link to this one in the description. But guys, that's going to be it for this video. I will see you next time.